we are a team all of the lights, and we're also working at the actual play, magic version play now. So, like our other team working on the project, we said earlier, the Magical Bridge Playground is about creating an environment that's accepting of kids of all backgrounds, whether you have disabilities or sight impairments or whatever it may be, you're welcome there. And so there's a lot of cool aspects about the park that we noticed when we visited. Um, a couple of the main ones is like, they mentioned there's different sections. And so, this is from the top of the hill. That picture was taken from over there. And so we've got a lot of different slides that kind of well, it's a cool little panoramic thing. <laughs> um, but one thing that really stood out to us was they said the hill. And at the hill, of all the research that the playground builders did, they never thought the hill, this little grass turf piece, would be so interesting. But they said kids love that more than anything else. And we thought that's really one idea that we wanted to play off of. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's a spinning section. And we just thought this was cool. There's a kind of merry-go-round where kids with where on wheelchairs can slide in and walk in so that they can also experience the thrill and excitement of like spinning around and then having that rolling sensation. And so when we were thinking about how we wanted to address this project, specifically aimed towards visually impaired kids, we recognize that there's a huge range of what visually impaired means. There's kids who are blind and can see absolutely nothing, and then there's legally blind where they have some issues where they can make out basic, basic shapes, colors, um, and different kind of aspects. And so looking at our design, we recognize these five parameters that we wanted to consider. Definitely cost, we wanted our design to be engaging. We kind of wanted to avoid electronics given the safety concerns associated with kids playing with you know, current and voltage and stuff. Um, and then we wanted to make whatever we were using as accessible as possible for all different kids. But the main thing we wanted to avoid or kind of pay attention to was stimulation. They mentioned that they wanted to ensure that whatever was at the playground did not overstimulate kids with certain disabilities. So not too much light, not too much noise, kind of keeping the sensory exhilaration down to a minimum. So I'm gonna let Naomi talk about some of our different ideas. Okay, so going off of the design specifications that Dan talked about, we came up with a few different ideas and we're just gonna talk about three of them today. Um, so the first one was a giant light-up doodle board that allowed kids to run their hands over the board and kind of make art with light. Um, so the pros of this were that it would look really cool in the playground and I think it would attract a lot of kids because it's a very accessible um, installation. So even kids in wheelchairs could play around with it and make art and it would be very bright and easy to see. Um, our first idea was to make a giant edge sketch but Maria brought up the point that Kids with visual impairments can't really see a fine line, so making it with light and lots of colors would be um, a cool way to um, make art. Oh wait, sorry. The cons of this were that it would be costly to implement and also um, would involve a lot of electronics, and because it's an outdoor playground, that could be a safety concern. Um, the second idea was inspired by an exhibit in the Exploratorium that all of us kind of looked at and thought was really cool, and that was a tactile dome. So kids with visual impairments could kind of feel their way through this dome, and um, it would allow them to kind of explore using touch. And um, the pros of this were that it might not cost that much, it would look really cool, and it would serve the purpose of um, creating an installation for visually impaired kids. But the cons were adaptability, and that parents might have to guide some kids through the dome uh, if it wasn't very accessible on their own. And then finally, the idea that um, we really like and are excited about is a slanted climbing wall. So like Dan mentioned, um, the turf sloped part of the park was the kids' favorite part, and the people who built the playground didn't realize when they were building it that that would be the like, like most loved part of the playground. So we wanted to kind of build off of that and make one face of that um, sloped turf a climbing wall. Um, and the pros of this was that, was that it would be really cool and it would allow for a natural type of play. The cons are we would have to be very careful about safety. And for, para, for quadriplegic kids, it might not be very accessible. But for kids who are in wheelchairs that do have upper body strength, it would be a nice way for them to kind of be able to play on the slanted part of the hill and also um, to experience the climbing wall. 
So we put everything, all of our ideas, including the ones that we didn't talk about today, in one of these cute charts that um, we learned about in lecture. And the one that covered all five categories was the slanted climbing wall, and it's also one that we're very excited about moving forward with. Um, so now our game plan for the rest of the quarter. Um, this has acquired materials, but we're considering a whole bunch of materials for the back of the climbing wall. So um, looking at both um, like prototype materials and then also kind of final implementation playground materials, whether it be that kind of like squishy rubbery um, material in the playground or like a turf as well. Um, and then we've been designing different grips in CAD, making them kind of really easily accessible for kids um, to hold on to. And the reason we wanted to design our own grips um, was so that we can make them clear and put LEDs um, through the back so we can make them really, really colorful, um, which is one of the things that was most important uh, in designing for a visually, visual impairment was this like really bright contrast. Um, and also so that we can silicone test around them so it won't be a safety concern with kids bumping their heads on the grips. So here are a few sketches um, of just some of the grips that we were like, sh different shapes we were thinking about, and then um, just like the how the, um, the mound. Um, and then potential roadblocks. Um, once we get a prototype, we're, I think it'll be difficult to get access to the children to test kind of what they think of it, how engaging it is, um, especially just with a prototype that might, necess might not necessarily be super um, safe uh, <laughs> to climb on yet. <laughs> um, uh, our electronics background for wiring all the LEDs, um, Jay had mentioned that he wanted um, maybe to connect them to a solar uh, panel to keep the voltage down um, to eliminate the safety concern. Um, and then cost, and then overall inclusivity for um, all different types of abilities. Thank you.